What's up, guys, and welcome, Daily Theologians. Phil Fisher from VeggieTales is making waves again, and for a reason that is pretty obvious, I think you're going to want to stick around for this one and check this out. There. And Wait a minute. I have, to, I have to correct something I just said. Hmm. I just spoke from an entirely white perspective. African-American pastors are also in big city. I'm thinking of Charlie Dates. Yeah. You know, Charlie Dates is right downtown Chicago in a very secular environment as well. So the black church, I'm going to add that on. I do think the more, you know, over the last couple of months that the black church plays a key role in American Christianity going forward um, because it's not, it hasn't been co-opted. So Phil Vischer, Mr. Veggie Tales. I was grateful for him when I was first saved and then I, started to pay more attention to some of the theological things, and I think he should be avoided. And let me explain why. Uh, when someone says something like that, it doesn't mean he's wrong. He actually might be right. He might be right that uh, African-American churches are helpful in many areas going forward to face the unique problem sets facing the country country and culture. The problem is this, when everything becomes about race. There's only one race, the human race. When everything becomes about your secret knowledge of being on the inside, of having the right perspective on these things, of evaluating everything through this filter, including Vodi Bakum, who we're going to get to. But you'll see what I mean. And this is why people hate wokeism, because it's a different religion that puts humanity at the top. It, it tries to uh, basically denigrate everyone that is not on the inside of uh, basically uh, hating themselves, right? So you have to fit the mold. In fact, the, the Italian prime minister, I can't do an Italian accent, hey, uh, just did a great speech on how the wokeness tries to enslave you by hating yourself. So you can't be yourself, so you have to be what they tell you to be. And uh, so I think she was on to something. I'll probably do a clip on that. But Phil said this recently, abortion is an obvious evil. Okay, agreed. Just as war is an obvious evil. Okay, potentially, uh, are either ever justified. Christians come to different conclusions. And of course, that is correct. They do come to different conclusions on war. I assume you know of Christian history to be aware of this. What he's doing, though, is he's lumping abortion into our view of war. And that, of course, must never be done, to quote Pilgrim's Progress. He's He's you see what he did there? He just tried to slip a curveball past everyone saying, yeah, the Christians, some are for abortion. Uh, no, Phil. No, no, they're not. That's evil. It's murder. They don't come to different conclusions on that one. So, again, his judgment is off. He's uh, using, uh, I think, deceptive argumentation tactics as well. If you pay attention to this clip, I'll play that clip again, um, because basically everything becomes about what color are you? What ethnicity are you? And that is really an attempt to divide. And then I want to mention uh, the age of the earth and his uh, his views there as well. So check this out one more time. There. And Wait a minute. I have to I have to correct something I just said. Hmm. I just spoke from an entirely white perspective. Okay, so you can watch that whole clip yourself. Now I'm not saying that uh, we shouldn't consider other people's perspectives, but he's white. Uh, you just say, you know, my perspective may be not entirely considering other people's issues and things they're facing. In fact, I've seen him uh, recently, I was reading through this, he does this with gun control. And he says, you would be against weapons of war if you lived in the inner city as a pastor. And and like, no, you would be, maybe you're for preaching the law. Maybe you're for helping families. You know, why does it have to line up with your view, Phil, of guns? Why? Well, that's a woke tactic to try to control people. And uh, also with this, everything, it becomes about race. And you'll see that with Vody Balcom. Let me show you the Vody uh, commentary here. I've always trusted his theology. This is speaking of Vody. I don't think he's denied their experience this country and history of this country. He's just difference of opinion when it comes to solution. Right. Just saying his views are a popular Unpopular among most black Christians, his audience is overwhelmingly conservative. White Christians, not much progress likely to come from that. Progress towards what? Progress towards godliness, progress towards preaching the gospel, progress towards what? What are we progressing towards? Now, you can say I don't agree with Vody. I don't I don't think that he's uh, right. I think you'd be wrong because Vody is generally right down the middle with most of the issues. And then, of course, the answer to that is, well, it's because you're white. Well, 
What does that have to do with truth? It has nothing to do with truth. And again, it's race baiting. That's the problem. Everything is race. Everything is underprivileged. And what this is, is subtle self-righteousness that tries to elevate self. See how humble I am. You're not being humble because the way you're doing it is divisive, evil, and false. You're presenting the facts and this uh, argumentation in a false way. Check this out. Perhaps a Vody Bauckham presidency would bring more racial reconciliation in the midst of watching world talk about Great Commission. Dude is living here, probably no more than a Candace Owen presidency. Unfortunately, he doesn't speak for many African-American Christians. Now, that was back in May. But you can see here, everything is about race. So Vody, Vody's opinions don't matter because he doesn't represent his uh, ethnicity right. He doesn't represent himself correctly or the people that he's supposed to be speaking for. But what if Vody is just a human being speaking for people that value the Bible, that value Reformed theology, that value the clarity of Scripture? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? This is race baiting. This is turning everything into a political race issue. And uh, that's why I think he should be avoided. Here, There's more, though. Check this out. So he's he's basically he's doing this. He's, you know, he's going full on, you know, against the country, everything's not right and things of that nature. That's the general tenor of his speech and topic over the years. And that is why I'm saying, he, warning, don't don't listen to, uh, to Phil. Check this out on the young earth creationism. Uh, as taught by Ken Ham and others, was born out of interpretations of a vision. One of the founders of SDA uh, had, I think it's Mary, Mary White, uh, messing up her name, uh, Ellen G. White, sorry, uh, had turned a book to called New Geology, one of her followers in the 1920s. Well, this uh, is not true. This is patently false. This is 100% false. And so Jason Lyle came out and wrote a long rebuttal to this uh, because Jason Lyle's an astrophysicist, very smart, very intelligent. And he went point by point through the things that Phil claims in this article. Now, whether or not you hold to a uh, fairly what we would call recent Earth you know, six day creation, which I think you should, uh, that's not necessarily a salvation issue, but I do think it's an underlying major issue because evolution is the religion of our day. Once you take away the long ages, they have no basis for that, uh, fairy tale that nothing creates everything. Either way, it doesn't, it doesn't work. But so Jason Lyle went out and, uh, basically wrote this, uh, False. We've all heard the myth that Ellen G. White started a belief about young earth. But anyone who's studied history knows such an idea is absurd. The Lord created heaven and earth, see everything in them, and six days was taught by Yahweh himself. It was written by his own finger in stone, Exodus 20.11. The biblical time scale is affirmed by Jesus in passages like Mark 10.6. Uh, God created humans, male and female. Paul affirms it in Romans 1.20. Uh, first 13.8 billion years of time uh, would have been impossible being not around for the first 13.8 billion years of time. Basically, you can't have death, sin, and disease before the fall, or death and disease before the fall, and, and suffering, all those things. Uh, although we cannot calculate from Scripture, not 6,000 years have passed since the creation of, of a young earth is uh, not a new idea. Basically, there's more to that article, but you know, the point is what I think actually one of the things that Phil does well is he knows just enough to shade the truth. He has just enough of the scoop to go, oh yeah, people go, yeah, that's, oh, yo, oh, okay. And what they're missing is the context or the authority of the Bible or things of that nature. And and people like this, I mean, it's how the, uh, the mob operates. Again, it's all whipping people up into a frenzy, us versus them, uh, that, that we've got the inside scoop. You got to hate, hate uh, your ethnicity because there's only one race, the human race in order to be uh, part of the in crowd. It's a form of Gnosticism and a form of self-righteousness, and it needs to be rejected. Now, I'm not saying Phil isn't a Christian. I'm not saying that at all. I, I don't know you know, where his heart's at and all this, but I will say avoid his teaching, avoid his commentary, because he throws in subtle things, and uh, you'll notice the people that get fired up about this are the ones that say, yeah, we got to do that. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't help the poor, but his... Uh, he even did a thing on immigration that if we don't let the the poor and the sick and all these people just flood into the country, then then we're not loving the least of these. Then we're racist or or whatever he's he's saying. Again, all about race, all about promoting his agenda. But what most people are saying is, no, we have law and order as a process to protect the neighbors and nations and integrity of this place for the betterment of those around us, for the safety of those coming in. And because it's right, that is the process. It's not 
uh, an evil process to do that. And you can have different views on that, but but basically his view is that you have to agree with me or you don't get it or you're you're not, you know, you're speaking from whiteness. Even Vody's speaking from not blackness. He's not black enough or whatever. It, it's, it's a racist thing. And it, it, the, the reason this is deceptive is it sounds so tolerant. It sounds so loving, but what it is, is it's hateful. This is a self-righteous man manipulating people. This is a self-righteous man twisting things in order to promote his agenda. This is a self-righteous man that is trying to convince you that you should be under his yoke which is a yoke of slavery, but Christ died to set us free from slavery. He died to save people from every tribe, tongue, and nation. He lived a perfect, sinless life in our place, born infinite hell that died and rose. Where's the gospel in any of these messages? Where's the hope? Where's the freedom from sin and its enslavement to sin? Well, people that promote this want to put you back under the law. They want to put you back in slavery. And that is is the issue. And they do that by whipping you up into an emotional frenzy, by making you angry, by making you, you know, like that. But the reality is a guy that says Christians have different opinions on abortion. Really, Phil? I don't think so. They don't, to quote Macaulay Culkin. Abortion is murder. And so the way he argues is manipulative. And that's what I'm trying to show. I'm not trying to say that you have to agree or disagree with everything he says. I'm saying the way he argues is divisive. The way he argues is manipulative. The way he argues is not true or forthcoming, and he has an agenda, and it's the it's the good old left playbook that he's trying to run on everyone, where Vody can't even be Vody. He's not, he's not representing them. Who's he representing, Phil? Is he not representing humanity? He's not representing Christianity. I, it's just there's one race, the human race. Have you not read? God made them in the beginning, male and female. And I think people that fail to understand the uh, importance of that unity are falling right into the trap of dividing. And I've had some serious conversations with one of my best friends over this, and he was angry with me. He's also, well, I'm not going to give it away, but he's he would be um, – Anyway, it's a good friend, but but it's this issue, and it manipulates people. Even people with good theology can fall into this because of their experiences. I'm not saying their experience is wrong. The problem is when they say, well, you're racist because of that. That's your privilege talking because of that. Who, who's got the privilege now throwing out that card? That is, boom, right back in your face. You're the one that's angry. You're the one that's being racist. And you know what you never hear about is black people being racist in these things. You never see it. Oh, they can't do it. That never happens. Really? It doesn't happen. Oh, it's always just the white guy, huh? Now, we understand why. We understand the history of, of um, different things in our nation, but other nations have enslaved people forever. And no one ever talks about the Jewish nation being enslaved. Hardly ever hear that. Hardly ever hear other nations that are not uh, considered black talked about. So this issue has to do with the human heart. It's the human heart that's the problem. It's not the color of somebody's skin. It's not their ethnicity. There are certainly different perspectives here, and I'm not trying to denigrate those or or say those are not important. What I'm saying is you cannot come out and say that uh, these half-truths and Phil, what Phil's saying, and I just wouldn't recommend it. That's basically what I'm saying. Stay away from Phil. Stay away from the veggie man. And uh, let me know what you think below. Leave a comment, and don't forget to take a moment. Hammer that like button. <laughs> Like the 95 Theses, and uh, thank you very much. God bless.